Hello everyone. Today is something a bit different. Instead of my usual technical breakdowns and tutorials, I want to just talk about the martial art that I'm most passionate about. Muay Thai. No, I do love Muay Thai, but the martial art of choice for me is Kudo. Now, maybe some of you don't know much about Kudo. So stick around and let me give you all the details on this interesting new martial art. Kudo began as an offshoot of Kyokushin Karate. It was formed by a Kyokushin Karate champion, Takashi Azuma, in 1981. He also held a Dan rank in Judo. And he felt that Kyokushin competition rules um, weren't realistic enough with the lack of punches to the face and no grabbing, no throwing. He wanted something more realistic. So he blended Kyokushin Karate with Judo uh, to come up with a new style of Karate which he called Daidojuku Kakuto Karate or Fighting Karate. Through the use of super safe plastic faced headgear like this, he was able to introduce head punches into karate competition. This is something that was still relatively unheard of at the time. Um, there were some tournaments that allowed contact to the face, but there were certain controls on it and it often ended up with a lot of injuries. Um, the only option they had then was to wear gloves, but karateka didn't like wearing gloves. It changed the way you fight. It, it basically turned it into kickboxing. Once you put gloves on, you end up doing kickboxing. So they wanted to stay away from the glove idea and still fight with the uh, bare knuckles. So the headgear made this possible. At that time, that was revolutionary. Most karate tournaments were still using very restrictive rules that uh, didn't allow hard contact to the face. Many traditional martial arts still stick to those kind of restrictive rule sets. And the result is an unrealistic style of fighting. So, Daidojuku was a new revolutionary practical style of karate that not only allowed for punches to the face but also grabbing and throwing and even headbutts and it was one of the forerunners of mixed martial arts then throughout the 80s and 90s they incorporated techniques and training methods from other martial arts such as boxing muay thai uh, wrestling and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And so after a while, it had changed so much that it no longer really resembled karate anymore. They stopped doing all the traditional kata from karate and kudo competi competition looked more like MMA than karate. And so they came up with a new name, kudo, to signify a new style of Japanese budo, one that incorporated the best techniques from various practical styles of martial arts into one fluid multi-range system, Kudo. Kudo competition looks something like this. <clears throat>
Fun stuff, huh? So, as you can see, it resembles mixed martial arts. There's striking, throwing, takedowns, and submissions. But there are some fundamental differences between Kudo and MMA. For a start, the Gi. Okay? The Gi allows for grabbing, grabbing and striking, controlling your opponent, also all the grips from Judo, allowing for the Judo throws, and also you've got your lay pull chokes and Gi manipulation from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So this makes Kudo somewhat appealing to people from those grappling backgrounds. Then you've got the headgear. Now, this is what makes Kudo special. It allows for strikes to the face. Not only punches, elbows, knees, headbutts. Full power contact to the face. All without the risk of getting your face all mashed up. Let's face it, no one wants to look like Frankenstein, right? Especially if you're not fighting as a pro. So with this headgear, we get to use all those techniques without the risk of black eyes, broken orbital bones, broken noses, cuts, eye pokes. All the problems that you see in MMA are negated through this. And generally, it's less damage to the face, which is good for people who actually work for a living, who want to experience a full contact martial art without getting the face all beat up so bad that they can't work. Now that's a real winner. There are some drawbacks to the headgear, but we'll talk about those later. Another difference between Kudo and MMA are the rules. Kudo is generally for tournament style. So that means you fight, and if you win your fight, you go on to fight again and so on until it gets to the last two remaining people who fight in the finals to decide the winner of that division. So each fight is generally three minutes long, one round. There are though um, extra rounds in the case of a draw. The winner is decided either through KO, submission, points decision, or judges decision. Now, points. Points are scored through significant strikes, or strikes that show obvious significant damage. For example, you knock your opponent down. You get points for it. Other ways you can get points is through a throw, where you slam your opponent hard on the ground. You can get points for it. Another situation, on the ground. You get a dominant position such as knee on belly or mount and you simulate ground and pound. You get points. Now, punches to the face on the ground from above are against the rules. They are a foul, okay? This is where the rules start to get a bit funky, okay? The person on top can't punch the person on bottom, but he can simulate punches to get a point, okay? The person on bottom is allowed to punch the face of the person on top because the thinking is they're not able to generate as much power, it's not dangerous. This can lead to some problems though in the rules because sometimes what if two guys are on their sides? What if it's a 50-50 position? There are some issues there that still need working out, but Kudo is still a relatively young martial art, so maybe we'll see some developments there in the future. Punches to the body on the ground, however, are allowed in the current rules from both above or below or side, wherever. On the ground, you can punch to the body, including kicks, knees, whatever. Clinching in Kudo is limited to 10 seconds at a time and you get split up. Ground fighting is also limited to 30 seconds and you only get two times per round, two bouts of ground fighting per round of 30 seconds each. 
the thinking behind this is that in a real fight, you don't want to be on the ground. It's too dangerous. But you need to know how to defend yourself on the ground. You need to know grappling in order to know how to fight. You can't avoid that situation. So, Kudo addresses the need to know how to grapple, but it stresses the importance of staying on your feet. This is something that makes Kudo a very practical self-defense martial art. And it's a very striking, heavy form of MMA. Points are not awarded for takedowns unless you're able to slam your opponent in a way that outside on a concrete ground would obviously do damage. That will get you a point. So these differences in the rules lead to some slightly different fighting strategies between Kudo and MMA. You also have to consider that Kudo is fought on an open tatami mat with no cage. So cage stand-ups and using the cage and forcing your opponent against the cage, none of these strategies are relevant in Kudo. So it leads to slightly different fighting styles. So why would you want to do Kudo? It's a good question. I had to ask myself that question many years ago when I first started Kudo back in 2003. At that time, I was doing Muay Thai. I had a background in Taekwondo, Kyokushin, and some other martial arts. Uh, I had seen the UFC and I knew I needed a multi-range system. I needed to know how to grapple and stand up. I loved Muay Thai, but I also really enjoyed that traditional Japanese Budo, that os mentality, that depth that you find in the Japanese martial arts systems, where it's not just about winning tournaments and trophies, but it's something deeper, it's something more spiritual. It's mo more about excelling as a person, constantly growing, polishing your character, striving for excellence and perfection in your life, making martial arts not just a short-term goal or a competitive sport, but a way of living. And Kudo retained those aspects from the traditional martial arts while putting them in a modern format, a modern, practical, multi-ranged martial art format that was just what I was looking for. It was perfect. <laughs> Add to that the headgear. This was a big plus for various reasons. When I first started training in Kudo, MMA was still relatively new. The idea of wearing those little gloves and smashing each other in the face was a little bit daunting, I will admit it. I wasn't in a hurry to try jumping into that kind of competition, especially if I'm not a professional, I'm not getting paid to do it. That's just not smart. I needed to get used to head contact without gloves first, but in a way that I could slowly acclimatized to it and the headgear was perfect for that not only that it allowed for full contact elbows and sparring <laughs> i came from Muay Thai. i loved that being able to throw elbows and sparring and there were none of those cumbersome gloves that you get in kickboxing that turn into big pillows you can hide behind you had to really know how to defend yourself bare knuckle. Another plus about the headgear is that I'm very short-sighted. I wear contacts. When I had to fight under kickboxing rules, I either had to take my contacts, contacts out and fight half-blind, which wasn't fun, or keep them in and risk having them fall out halfway through a fight, which would really screw up my distance. So being able to fight with my contacts in was a big bonus. Another thing, when MMA first started, a lot of it was still 
NHB, no holds barred competition. They were still doing soccer kicks to the head of downed opponents in pride back then. This was something I was not comfortable with. Coming from a background in Budo, I really didn't feel the need to sit on someone's chest, trap their arms and smash their face in with no gloves on in the name of a sport. Now, these days we seem to have become desensitized to that. It's just become normal. It's, hey, it's MMA, you know. But when it first started, people weren't so keen on, a lot of people weren't so keen on that. I certainly wasn't. I don't have that kind of sadistic mentality where I enjoy sitting on someone and smashing their face in when they have no way of defending against it. It's just not sport to me. I don't want to go that far. Put me in a street situation where I feel my life may be in danger, sure, of course. But in a sport? No. I wasn't willing to go that far. And I certainly didn't want to have it done to me. So, kudo gave me the opportunity to learn how to fight like that, defend that, simulate that, without actually having to go through and do that to anybody or have it done to myself. Honestly, MMA is a great spectator sport. It's a great professional sport. I love watching MMA. I do. But as an amateur sport, uh, I don't know if it's the kind of thing that the average person really wants to do. Maybe you want to get the benefits of MMA training because of its practicality and its the way it addresses every aspect of fighting. I think this is important for a modern martial artist. I don't think you can really call yourself a practical martial artist if you don't address all the ranges of combat anymore. You need to be able to strike and clinch and grapple and fight on the ground. You need those abilities, otherwise you're always going to have a weakness that can be exploited. Kudo addresses those weaknesses. MMA on the other hand also addresses those issues, but it's not particularly good as an amateur sport. And how many people who practice MMA actually plan on becoming professional fighters? It's probably a small percentage. And of those who do become professional fighters, how many of them make a decent living out of it? I've been training and sparring with professional fighters for the past 20 years. I see what they go through, the dedication, the sacrifice, the hard work. And for what? None of them make a decent living out of it. So you have to think to yourself, unless you are some kind of phenom who's smashing guys in competition and obviously going places, maybe MMA isn't exactly the right sport for you, okay? Even the guys in the UFC, it's only really the top dogs that are really pulling in the bucks. The guys who are in the lower ranks, they're struggling. And that's in the UFC, the promotion that everybody's trying to get into. Most people are in smaller promotions, not even in the UFC. So how hard is it for them? What are they getting their brains smashed in for? You got to think about these things. So that's why I think Kudo is a viable alternative to training in MMA that gives you all the same benefits. You still get that same kind of multi range MMA style training and fighting ability, but without a lot of the damage that you'll get competing in MMA. Kudo also gives you a practical method of self-defense. 
Now, there are a lot of um, self-defense systems out there, real reality-based training, reality-based defense, okay? Um, Krav Maga, this kind of thing, right? And they have a lot of good uh, practical self-defense techniques. But, well, the better ones also do some good contact sparring. But sparring and actual fighting are a different level. Okay, I spar a lot in the dojo, but it's never the same as when I step in the ring or on a tatami. When you get in there with someone who's coming at you violently aggressive, who's bent on smashing your face and knocking you out, choking you unconscious, wrenching your arm off, okay, the fear, the insecurity, the adrenaline dump, then the effects of that adrenaline dump, how it can put you in a panic, how it can make you tired fast, how it can um, slow your reactions. All the things that happen in an actual fight confrontation. It's the same if it's on the tatami or if it's on the street, okay? So if you do a reality-based system where you've never actually experienced that in a fight, then kind of a waste of time it doesn't matter how many times you've drilled something how smooth you are at doing it in the dojo even against a slightly resisting opponent uh, when it comes to the fight it's going to be a very different feeling so if you've experienced real fighting and you've learned to adjust to that kind of adrenaline dump you've learned to manage your emotions you've learned to deal with it and react unconsciously smoothly with your techniques then that is learning how to fight that's the first step you need to know if you want to learn how to fight and defend yourself if you don't have that then all the other stuff is just kind of meaningless okay so that's why i think kudo makes a great base system for self-defense now, once you have kudo, once you have some fighting experience, then you can go and build on top of it. You can bring in things like Krav Maga and weapons and multiple opponents and all that stuff. Okay? Um, so kudo gives you this great base from which to grow from. So there you go. I hope this explanation enlightened some of you who didn't know much about Kudo. And for those of you who already practice Kudo, I hope it brought up some points to think about. Os.